Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. DY guy is back. I think he's back. Sorry, I've been having some technical difficulties. And uh, I think I finally have it up and running. Can everybody see and hear me okay? I'm going to give it a second. Mic check, mic check, cam check. Everything seems to be working. Okay, very good. Please uh, excuse the mess. Uh, we're doing a little bit of renovation uh, in the office, so we had nowhere to put this stuff. So it's going to be sitting behind me for a little bit, but hopefully we'll get it done uh, this week. Hey, Cam. Hey, Cloud. Hey, Hillbilly. Lunchables. How's it going, everyone? Having a good Saturday? It's going to be fun, fun, fun on the bun today. As always, we always have fun, don't we, boys and girls? We always have a bunch of fun. Let me move that monitor so I can read it a little bit easier. Uh, maybe even a little bit more. There we go. You guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm doing it off screen, but it's going to make it a lot easier for me to read. Hey, Kurt. My name is the DUI guy. That's what people call me. Hey, a Flotog. How's it going, brother? Thanks for joining as a member. I saw that the other day, man. That's freaking awesome. Uh, we now have uh, a few members. Surprising number of people actually joined as an uh, honorary lawyer. I guess it's the title that's really uh, enticing, I guess one might say. Um I mean, I, I can see why. I can see why. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad people are are enjoying it. Like I said, it's all it's all about having fun with it. Um, you see, we have some more emojis. I can't add more for the time being. These are the emojis. If you remember, some of these you can't really see. I really don't like that. I may have to ask them to. make them a little bit darker because you can't really see the emotions. It's really, it's really unfortunate. Well, good, F Flotog. I'm glad, bro. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. It's all about having fun. If you don't want to be an honorary lawyer, you don't have to, like four years. No one's making you. Richard Malmberg Mem. If you have questions, you can save them for the end of the stream. Uh, or you can always email or uh, call me on a weekday. So yeah, uh, memberships are live. What else is new? Still not at 50,000, but getting close, just inch by inch every day. Uh, we're sitting at almost 49,000. Uh, it's it slowed down a little bit. Again, I don't really have uh, new content, so I'm not surprised why viewership has slowed down. A couple of my videos went viral on YouTube last month, but it, I don't think they are currently viral. Uh, and so uh, that's why... Most people are uh, not really visiting the channel, I suppose. But hey, every once in a while, YouTube just picks up a video of mine, and um, and uh, you know, I, I, some more viewers are exposed to this channel. That's all, what it's all about: is is educating people, uh, getting viewership. For me, uh, educating people about the law. I mean, that's what it's all about, is education. Make sure that people are aware of their rights, what to do, what not to do, 
how to do it, and so on. I, I am shocked. I, that's what I said at Flowtog. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Let's call it that. Pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. So, yeah, um, things are going well. I mean, not much to report today. Not too many updates. Again, if you are so inclined. Uh, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell uh, that will notify you anytime I go live and have uh, live streams such as this or when I uh, upload a new video, you'll be notified as well. And so um, today uh, we are talking about, I think, of course, one of my favorite topics, DUIs, of course. Uh, I'm well versed on it. I've studied the topic backwards and forwards. I've gone to seminars. You know, before you know it, I'm going to be a speaker at some of those things probably. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. But um, I'd much rather speak on, on trials uh, and DUIs rather than just the general topic. I, I, I'm not a brainiac. I really am not. Um, I was, I was a, an average law student. It's no surprise. People who have been on this channel, they, they know uh, I'm not like I'm not a brainiac. I'm just an average, average law student, but not at the bottom. I'm not at the top. I'm like, I was right in the middle, right smack dab in the middle. Uh, and those are people that become lawyers and, uh, you know, make money. But the, I think the, the interesting thing is that I've learned about myself compared to many others is, although I may not understand the law as some lawyers do and, and the intricacies of it, I'm a good litigator. And obviously, my channel has shown, you guys have seen it firsthand, is uh, the courtroom is my place. This is, it's my territory. It's what I love to do. And so in this pandemic, I've been, I wouldn't say struggling, um, but kind of having a little, um, having a little bit of uh, a back and forth with myself, just trying to kind of find myself. And uh, much like everybody else, I'm sure I've had to deal with depression on some level, even though you try to kind of push it away, it, it's still there. The you, we obviously are not socializing as much. Uh, we're not going to courtrooms, at least I'm not. And even when I am, I've I've gone to a few courtroom, made a few courtroom appearances recently. They're all virtual. You know, it's it's a totally different experience. Totally different experience. So it's. Um, <laughs> 100,000 subs by Christmas, Hillbilly. Hey, who knows? You never know. Uh, we'll see if uh, if the trend continues or if my, my channel goes viral or something. I don't know. I, I, I never imagined, like I said, when I started this thing, that, that people would even be interested in, in, in what I do. I thought it was just going to be a select few people who want to represent themselves or lawyers want to learn how to how to be better you know, litigators or just learn how, how to litigate a case and what it looks like. Um, and law students and stuff, but anyway, it's it's evolved into something I, I I'm I'm still learning. So, uh, yeah, Richard, yeah, please please save your question uh, until the very end. Uh, Aqua tracks, by the way, I, I don't drink either. Um, I think this profession has kind of beat it out of me uh, in my, my line of works specifically. Uh, today, by the way, you've noticed I'm not wearing a tie. Uh, I don't know. I decided to go a little bit more uh, relaxed, if you will, in today's session. And um, we're just going to be having some fun going back and forth towards the end. Uh, in the beginning, it's going to be a lecture. And of course, today's topic, uh, I'm not going to be going in any particular order, by the way. Hey, Mary Jones. I'm not going to be going in uh, any particular order. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, I do, yes, this is, I was actually born in a suit, Junior Alexander. Uh, when, I, when I came out of the womb, my, the first thing they saw was my tie. Uh, and then I think they saw my head. 
And so, <laughs> well, I care what I look like, Ray, because I, I'm a public figure at the end of the day. So to me, appearances matter. Anyway, uh, so today we're, we're going to be talking about drug versus alcohol DUIs. And like I said, we're not going to be going in any particular order. Um, I have an agenda, and uh, we're going to be covering all the, the points that I would like to cover today. And, I mean, primarily, what, what people, I think, need to understand is it doesn't matter if you're being charged. And this is, by the way, all I'm talking about, for the most part, is going to be Kentucky law. There's going to be a lot of overlap with the other 49 states. But there are going to be some things that may not necessarily be uh, jurisdiction related. So there, th these are very jurisdiction specific, some of these points. But a lot of these points are also going to be uh, exclusive to Kentucky. Again, this is where I practice. So um, drug DUI, what people, people need to understand, it doesn't matter if you're being charged with an alcohol DUI or a drug DUI. For the most part, in I think all states, if not the absolute majority of them, you're you're going to be charged with a the the standard operating a motor vehicle under the influence charge. So it doesn't matter what you were under the influence of. Uh, all that matters is that were you under the influence of something, and did that something impair your ability to drive? I had a judge one time. Uh, I think you all have seen, uh, if you've seen the video, uh, she referred to it as the stewed prunes law. If you are under the influence, if stewed prunes uh, make you under the influence, then it's illegal for you to operate a motor vehicle with stewed prunes in your system. Now, of course, that's that's a little bit extreme. Uh, I would be, first of all, I'd be uh, hard pressed to find anybody who would get uh, inebriated by stewed prunes, but of course we do know there's something that is called um, auto brewery syndrome. That's when you brew your own uh, alcohol. Uh, and the the issue with um, with that, it, I mean, it, it bleeds into a whole, whole different theory. Uh, you're you're brewing your own alcohol. You're you're not inebriated by an outside source. So that 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 raises a host of other issues. But in order for you to be able to, hey Deb, uh, and I'll get to your question later, Eflotog. Remember it. Uh, I I addressed it at previous lectures, but right now I want to focus on on the this particular topic. Um, if you are under the influence of something that well, if you have something in your system, let me rephrase that. If you have something in your system that is making you um, unable to operate a motor vehicle safely, okay, let's just put it that way, you could be arrested and charged. Now, the question is, uh, you know, some individuals may be highly sensitive to caffeine. Some of you may remember the example of the individual who got arrested. It's either Colorado or California where they got arrested and all after a blood test, all they found in the guy's system was caffeine. I mean, if you're sensitive to caffeine, uh, operating a motor vehicle under the influence of caffeine, again, it, you're not going to be convicted with the right lawyer, of course. If, if you're with a crappy lawyer who just tells you to plea, you're going to plea and you're going to be convicted. Uh, but we're not talking about uh, crappy lawyership. We're talking about uh, good, decent lawyership. And simply being under the influence of something that is not illegal is not going to land you a conviction for a DUI. I mean, so much is obvious. Uh, but then you run into a host of other issues. Uh, what about prescription medication, right? Because uh, you could be consuming, uh, not consuming, you could be uh, have a prescription for, for a drug, uh, any type of drug, a Xanax, let's say, right? Uh, driving under the influence, Xanax, I believe, is listed in the, um, in the list of substances that can be, that you can be prosecuted under. I mean, let's take an even simpler one, amphetamine. Amphetamine, which is what? Uh, it's found in ADD medication, right? Um, so if you take ADD meds, 
you can be prosecuted for operating a motor vehicle under the influence of your ADD medication. Uh, Cause of course you're quote unquote under the influence of it because it's in your system. It's affecting you in, in one way or another. But the problem is the law does make an exception for prescription. So long as they're taken pursuant to the prescription, because if you're taking, you know, you're supposed to take half a tab, let's say, and you take four full tabs, meaning eight times your, uh, prescribed dose, you could be, and might as well will be prosecuted for operating a motor vehicle under the influence of that substance, right? Uh, and the blood results will, of course, show that. So it, it, the law does make an exception for prescriptions. However, uh, the dichotomy between alcohol and, and drug DUIs, interestingly enough, now, of course, we know breathalyzers, right? Uh, a breathalyzer will test your, your breath for presence of alcohol. They're, again, in my book, they're not accurate. There's just so many things that could potentially go wrong. Uh, the amount of air you exhale and the temperature of your body can affect the result by 5 to 10 to 15%, depending on which book you read uh, and which study you, you analyze. So all those things, uh, the, the devices are not very accurate. So the default, if done properly, blood is considered to be the most accurate and best indicator of alcohol in the system. Now, of course, we're finding these labs screwing things up so much that none of these results, uh, the, a lot of these results we're getting, I shouldn't say none, but a lot of these results that we're getting are, are not so very accurate. But um, if procedures are followed properly. And if everything is done according to the, 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 the protocols and, and lab procedures, uh, you would assume that you would get an accurate blood result. So when it comes to alcohol, of course, you can do either breath or blood, but when it comes to uh, drugs, medications, and so on, uh, you're only going to be able to rely on blood. Uh, I know that some of you are probably thinking there are those prototype breathalyzers out west that they uh, a couple of companies have released a few months ago uh, they are designed to to test for marijuana and I, I believe they take some saliva it's not blood it's not a blood kit it's it's kind of like a pbt a, a portable breath test only it's a, a portable marijuana swab and so they, I believe they swab your, your mouth and they, uh, they can detect if there's any presence of THC. Hey, Joey. So um, again, for the most part, you'll be prosecuted all the same, whether you're under the influence of alcohol, or whether you're under the influence of drugs. So the question is, are you under the influence? And let's uh, go ahead and just break down the statute. This is this is the Kentucky statute. Like I said, I practice in Kentucky, so I'm well familiar with it. A lot of states are, are going to have different variations on the theme. Some states have it word for word. Uh, but the law, and it's located in KRS. KRS is uh, an acronym for Kentucky Revised Statutes. Uh, KRS... 189A.010, subsection 1, okay? That subsection pretty much covers the entirety of the DUI statute in Kentucky. Now, if you read Ohio's, for instance, and I think even Tennessee is what, I haven't looked at that one for a while, but uh, in a while, but you know, Ohio's I have. And I remember that Ohio's is just like, you know, this long, and it's just like the first part of it. And Kentucky is is not like it. We're, we're very... Uh, conservative, and we're also conservative about paper, <laughs> apparently, because uh, we have very, very, very short statutes sometimes, and it's um, it makes it difficult to interpret, uh, and they're very rarely amended. So, uh, KRS 29A010, subsection 1, part A, right? So, a person shall not be in physical control, operate a motor vehicle, uh, anywhere in the state, subsection A, having alcohol concentration of 0.08 or more measured by a scientifically reliable test or test of a person, of a sample of a person's breath or blood 
taken within two hours of cessation of operation or physical control of a motor vehicle, excuse me. So standard language, we're talking about uh, alcohol DUI. If you're taking the blood uh, or breath within two hours uh, of the, the individual that is suspected of being under the influence and they have a, a result of 0.08 or greater, easy, right? Then we go to subsection B. So for instance, if uh, you refuse to take any of the chemical tests, you will usually be prosecuted under this section while under the influence of alcohol. So the first uh, subsection, of course, is uh, a very objective, right? A very objective. It's the machine, right? The machine is going to say yay or nay, 0.08 or not 0.08, more than 0.08 or less than 0.08. While B is entirely subjective. It is the officer. This is what I saw. This is what I heard. This is what they said. This is what they smelled like. This is how they slurred their words, blah, 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 right? Their testimony. And then we get to C. So A and B, we pretty much covered on this channel uh, a lot. So you guys are, are probably very well familiar with it, those of you who regularly come here. And then we get to C. And C is a little confusing, and it kind of goes along with... Um, E as well, which we'll get to in a minute. So C says, while under the influence of any other substance, we just covered alcohol or just uh, the subjective uh, indicator, while under the influence of any other substance or combination of substances which impairs one's driving ability. And this is, I think, where the judge... Uh, that I was in front of one time got the whole stewed prunes um, theory. While under the influence of any other substance, if you're under the influence of, you know, I I'm trying to, to think outside the box here. Uh, if chocolate chip cookies uh, make you woozy to the point where you can't see straight, you're so you're so addicted and you so love chocolate chip cookies to the point where consumption of a chocolate chip cookie puts you over the edge and you can't see straight, you can't think straight, you cannot operate a motor vehicle in a safe fashion. Uh, I suppose a prosecutor who could get uh, try and get crafty, I, again, I think they would probably lose. Uh, it, it, would, it would take a hell of a lot of um, uh, sugar and, and, and the ability to put you under the influence, I guess, for it to actually work from the prosecutor's perspective. But this would be, uh, this would be uh, other, the other substance that we're talking about. Um, Tammy, cough syrup is a great example. The only problem is cough syrup actually contains alcohol amongst other chemicals, of course, as well. Uh, but it, it, that, that, I mean, that, that's actually a good example. That, that probably does fall under C. I will give you that one. Um, it, it, it would, it, it would, uh, I don't think it's listed again because it's a, it's a cold medication, but if you're taking, um, more than you should, you know, a lot of, I think high school kids, it's very popular amongst, uh, the young ones, uh, they, uh, what's that, that one brand Robitussin. I remember a lot of comedians, uh, were talking about doing robo shots or whatever it was. And then they would just chug these these bottles of Robitussin because it would get you all messed up, apparently, um, with all the – because you're overdosing. I mean, what you're literally doing, you're overdosing your body on the chemicals that um, – DXM, I remember, I remember it now. It's whatever the – it's like a word this long, but the kids call it DXM. And that substance, when introduced into the body in large quantities, is going to affect your ability to operate heavy machinery. Scissor, exactly, Joey. And so a prosecutor could use, if you you know chugged half a bottle of Robitussin and uh, got behind the wheel and then got pulled over because you were weaving all over the road and the officer smelled, smelled it on your breath and did a blood test and it came back with um, a high percentage of nanograms per milliliter of DXM in your bloodstream, then you would be able to be prosecuted under subsection C of KRS 189A.010. Uh, then, of course, we come to D, 
and we'll get to E in a second. E is very similar to, to C, um, but it's a little different. You'll see, you'll see how. D says, while the presence of a controlled substance listed in subsection 12 of this section is detected in the blood. So this is pretty much... Um, and also, again, measured by a scientifically reliable test taken within two hours of cessation of operation of motor vehicles. So anytime there's chemicals involved, it's got to be within two hours in Kentucky. Some states are three, some states are four, maybe a handful are five. I, I don't think there are any, but I know there are, uh, the majority are actually three and four. Kentucky is in, in the minority, uh, allowing only a maximum within two hours of cessation of operation. So we're kind of more favorable uh to to the driver and what is in subsection 12 well subsection 12 lists a bunch of different drugs and uh these are uh schedule one drugs any schedule one controlled substance except marijuana so marijuana is an exception uh, marijuana is not a a uh, a drug that if found in your system is an automatic uh charge of dui unless again you have a prescription uh, that is, I believe, uh, subsection, let's see, uh, 3B. Yeah, 4B, excuse me. Laboratory test basically will be inadmissible if the defendant consumed the substance under a valid prescription from a practitioner. So if you can show proof, I'm taking this pursuant to a prescription and it's within the therapeutic range. Again, this is the key. You're not, you know, below is fine. You're not above the therapeutic range because if you're above the therapeutic range, that means you're within the toxic or lethal range. Toxic, of course, meaning under the influence and lethal is potentially deadly. Um, so these are zero tolerance uh, drugs. Uh, any schedule one except marijuana, alprazolam, I can never remember these. That's that's the Xanax I was talking about. You know, amphetamine, any type of uh, ADD medication, for the most part. Um, we're not going to go through all of these, but uh, you know, carisoprodol is another one. I, I don't think I, I rarely see that one. It's a muscle relaxant, uh, something that relaxes the. It's a central nervous system depressant. Cocaine, uh, a central nervous system stimulant. Diazepam, I'm sure you guys are all familiar. Valium is diazepam. Hydrocodone, of course. Again, uh, another muscle relaxant. Methadone, which always I, I was always sheepish when I when I saw methadone because a lot of people who are heroin uh, recovery addicts uh, they they take methadone to kind of not be. Uh, well, while they're in recovery, and, and the fact that it's on there just is is really sad. But again, if you take it within pursuant to your prescription, you're going to be fine. Once again, these are all listed. These are all zero tolerance if you don't have a prescription. So I guess it's okay, but still, uh, methamphetamine, of course, oxycodone, and a few others. So those are listed in subsection 12 of the, the DUI statute. So any of those drugs, if they're found in your system and you're operating a motor vehicle and you don't have a prescription, you know, you, you ask your buddy, hey, listen, man, I, I'm really having a hard time. I got an exam tomorrow. I'm, I'm really stressed out. Do you mind if I have one of your Xanax, your Xanny bars, right? And he says, okay, well, here you go. Just don't, don't take a lot. You take a quarter. Trust me, you'll be, you know, and you take it and your, your body's not used to it, and you get behind the wheel and you're driving. I mean, that's a classic example, classic example of uh, when you could get a DUI because you're taking it not pursuant to a prescription. It's, uh, it's not yours, and you are, uh, you're operating a motor vehicle, and potentially you, know, you, you could cause an accident. So you could be charged and uh, potentially convicted if you're not careful. So... Uh, that's D. That's D, pretty much in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, and the chat is is absolutely killing me. Um, <laughs> yes, you could kill someone. Exactly, Patricia. That's the problem. Uh, the prescription is good for as long as the doctor says. I suppose, Carlum. I'm not a I'm not a physician, so I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much subsection D. Uh, the you you start you probably start to see a pattern emerging here, and that is so long as the drug has chemical properties in the scientific community that the drug will uh, make you impaired in any way, shape, or form, make you under the influence, right? And it will make you impaired in any way. Then you could potentially be prosecuted unless you have a prescription for it and you're taking it within the therapeutic limits. Because... Uh, and this is where we get to, to E, by the way. So finally, this is a good, good segue into E. While under the combined influence of alcohol and any other substance which impairs driving ability. Now, it sounds a lot like C, right? Remember C? While under the influence of any other substance or combination of substances? Well, that's talking about, let's say you have three different prescriptions. One is for, for an amphetamine, one is for a diazepam, and one is for alprazolam. So you're basically taking, you're taking some contradicting drugs, but let's, let's just go along with it uh, because they're going to start canceling each other out. One is a stimulant and the other is a depressant. But anyway, so two of them are depressants. So you're taking Valium, you're taking Xanax, and you're taking an amphetamine just for the, the hell of it, right? And you got prescriptions for all three. But you're driving around and you get pulled over because you uh, were weaving. They're driving all over the road and they wanted to do some field sobriety tests uh, on you and you acquiesced stupidly. I never agree. Don't do those things. They're designed for failure. I, I always talk about that. But let's say you do and now they have evidence against you uh, that you were under the influence. I actually have one of these cases right now. Uh, and the lady... Uh, had three drugs in her system and she was sober as a judge. Um, but the problem was is that the prosecutor thinks that he can win by um, arguing this statute, the combination. I think he's going under C because there was no alcohol involved. So the combination of drugs X, Y, and Z, in this case, as I was describing, alprazolam, amphetamine, and diazepam, having those three drugs in your system, let's say, are hypothetical, the interaction between those drugs is the cause of your impairment. Now, just by saying, and this is, this is I think, very important for people to realize, because a lot of people in this channel right now, in this chat right now, and you don't have to call yourselves out. I'm not asking you to. Uh, A-Kane, welcome. Welcome to the club, brother. Thanks for joining. A-Kane. Um, although you are not individually each one of those drugs in your prescription, you have a prescription for every single one, right? Uh, the prosecutor can try and argue that you're under the influence when you take a combination. So as I was saying, uh, oh, you're good, brother. Thanks, a -Kane. Um A lot of people right here in the chat uh, I'm sure will we'll attest to that, you know, uh, let's say you're an individual who takes more than one uh, prescription. That's the majority, I think, of, of people over the age of 50 or 60, uh, especially. Well, 
the problem is not simply driving with those drugs in your system. Like, because in theory, you're you're breaking the law every time you get behind the wheel, which is nonsense. It is complete nonsense. What the prosecutor is really, really looking for is some type of impairing behavior by you. Again, performing the, the, the field sobriety test, which you should never do, and doing poorly on them. Surprise! You know, the, the officer is already suspecting you of something as he pulled you over, or she. Um, so... It's not simply by by virtue of having those drugs in your system that you're violating the law. Prosecutor is always going to be looking for, or a police officer on the scene, and then the prosecutor later, looking for some type of impairing behavior. So if all you did was slightly weave, uh, and again, we're also assuming that uh, you submitted to a, a blood draw, which again, you should never, ever do uh, in Kentucky. Um. People always ask me, well, what if you're a hundred percent, you know, you got nothing in your system, nowhere, nada. I still say don't because sometimes those blood vials in the lab, they get mixed up with somebody else's and boom, they magically have a number on you where there should never be one. Um, it, it's just the way she rolls. Don't, you cannot trust the system. Um, so being under the combined influence of alcohol or any other substance which impairs driving ability. So this is the interaction. It's kind of like C. C is the interaction between drug A, drug B, and drug C, let's say, or just drug A and drug B, to make it simple. Uh, while E is, uh, you have a prescription, right? You have a prescription for Xanax, let's say. Let's stick with with uh, our, our lovely favorite Zanny bars, right? <laughs> Somebody was laughing at that earlier. No, no. Do people not call them Zanny bars? I think I, I've had too many um, DUI clients uh, that that have. I just it, I picked up the vernacular. I thought it was it was common nomenclature to call them Zanny bars. Uh, but anyway, so uh, Zanny bars. Uh, if you have a prescription for Xanax and you've taken a Zanny bar that morning pursuant to your prescription, you know everything's fine, and then come. 3 p.m. you decided to uh, drink a martini glass and then get behind the wheel. Well, there's always the possibility, and of course the prosecutor will need an expert for um, uh, to, to show this to a jury. Um, the interaction between the chemicals contained in the Xanax, which is a depressant, when interacted with the drug is... Uh, located in alcohol, you know, ethanol, combining ethanol, and I'm not a chemist, so I'm not going to go deep into this, but I think you guys uh, already see the picture. The interaction between two CNS depressants, central nervous system depressants, is going to lead to a much, much different result than if you just had alcohol in isolation and Xanax in isolation, right? So when you have them both together, when they you have them both together, the interaction could be a whole lot more, um, way a whole lot heavier on an individual than if they were just by themselves. So uh, yeah, you'll be able to rewatch the video after the the live stream ends here. Uh, I I save all all the videos on, publicly on YouTube. So if you got to be somewhere, by all means. So that's that's C and E uh, in Kentucky. Uh, and I think most other states. By the way, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I go live and anytime I have new content, which God willing, we're going to have some content soon, boys and girls. Uh, hopefully. I mean, uh, I have a pandemic trial coming up on the 8th of December. Um exactly a month from tomorrow um don't know if it's gonna go yet it sounds like it will and uh i, I don't know we, kentucky has so many states in the red right now but we'll we'll see how that goes so hopefully we're gonna have some more content for you all we're gonna have some more content um so c and e uh f F is, is very simple. Uh, it just talks about minors. If you're under the age of 21, uh, I'm talking about minors for uh, purposes of alcohol, not uh, age of majority, 18. But in Kentucky, 
much like uh, I think every other state at this point, the uh, legal drinking age, of course, is 21. And so the, the threshold is not 0.08 for individuals under the age of 21. It is much, much lower. It's at 0.02. And 0.02, uh, if, you blow, if you're under the age of 21 and you decide to blow, which you should never, ever do, and you blow above a 0.02, you can be charged with and convicted of a uh, DUI, operating a motor vehicle under the influence. Now, also something we haven't discussed, uh, but I'll just briefly mention that um, you, if you're a CDL driver, KRS 281.215, I think, I forget the, the last three numbers. I could probably find it if, if you all really want me to, which I, I doubt you would. Uh, if you're operating a commo commercial motor vehicle, the, that threshold is, is also lower. It's 0.04. Damn, that was loud. So... Um, 0 0.04 for CDLs, 0 0.02 for under 21. But let's get back to talking about drugs, right? Everyone's favorite topic. And let's talk about something that we haven't talked about, although I did see briefly in the chat somebody mention it. Marijuana, right? So uh, in very select states, I think Oregon... Um, and or Washington, it's not both, I know it's one of them, and I think Colorado have a per se limit, just like uh, we have when it comes to alcohol, uh, they have a per se limit for marijuana, and that per se limit is five nanograms per milliliter. So just like we have in 0.08 for alcohol, they have point, I'm sorry, they have five nanograms per milliliter for marijuana. Well, the interesting thing about that is, again, that's where Kentucky is a zero tolerance state. THC is not legal here yet. Uh, I think since CBD has gotten such a big breakthrough in, in Kentucky and other neighboring states, uh, I believe I saw somewhere that low THC products may even already be kind of legal in Kentucky. I, I don't have confirmation, like actual legal confirmation. I just saw it on a on a chart. And I did try to do some research, but I couldn't find anything of value. So I think it's still premature, probably. But uh, uh, eventually, it, it will be legalized. But m the majority of states are either still zero tolerance, uh, or they have a low threshold, uh, like the five nanograms per milliliter. But the problem is, the problem is, when it comes to marijuana, is as we all know. Uh, depending on if you're a, a light user, medium user, or heavy user, those are real characterizations. These are not just fiction anymore, uh, as we've come to realize. Uh, marijuana stays in your system. And how long does it stay in your system? Well, again, it varies. Are you a light user, medium user, or heavy user? And if you're a heavy user and you've been smoking you know, every day for months, and one day you decide to quit because, uh, again, a lot of people, I think, don't understand uh, marijuana is not an addictive substance. You don't overdose on marijuana. You don't die from marijuana. You may become really dumb and, and forget where everything is and, and what your name was. Uh, but other than, than memory loss, short-term memory loss and eventual long-term memory loss, I think uh, I don't think we lost anybody to, to the big green leaf. But anyway, uh, what I'm trying to get at is uh, if, if you are a heavy user, then your ability to clear THC out of your system, especially if you just quit cold turkey, is going to take some time. It's not going to be immediate. It's not going to be automatic. And if you uh, mistakenly submit to a blood draw two weeks after you quit smoking, hypothetically, after you've been indulging pretty heavily for a while, it may still show up in your system. It may still show up in your system. And that is a problem because if it does and the blood results come back and it shows THC X number of nanograms per milliliter, guess what? 
it doesn't matter. You're going to tell your lawyer all day long. I didn't smoke. I swear. I, I, I can promise you I'll bring, you know, a hundred friends who will testify to the fact that I was a, a regular smoker and then I quit cold Turkey and it's still in my system. Uh, the prosecutor is going to prosecute you. Uh, and of course it's going to be your job uh, to put on the defense. Um, but that is the difficulty in, uh, in these marijuana litigation cases to show to have, because, it, you know, what I said was an extreme example, but let's say, let's take a, a simpler example. The ones, ones I get periodically, uh, individual smokes on a, on a Tuesday gets pulled over on a Thursday, you know, less than 48 hours apart, uh, has it cleared out of their system? Not yet. Uh, they may not be a heavy user. They may be even just an occasional smoker. Two days is usually not sufficient to clear THC out of your system. Uh, now, uh, you got to be careful, though. Uh, body fat, yes. Body fat plays a huge role in one's ability to clear THC from his or her system. Uh, it becomes trapped in fat cells, which is why thinner people will clear it a bit quicker. Uh, thank you, A-Kane. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, watching you daily. What's going on, man? I do exist. Yes, I'm real. So, uh, yes, if you're, if you're, an, so perfect example, Akane, if you're an, uh, overweight individual and you just indulge, uh, once in a blue moon, you know, two, three, four, five days may not be enough for you to clear it out of your system. So that's a problem. That's a problem. And the, the blood results will usually not have an explanation. Now, of course, uh, you got to be careful. Like I was going to say, uh, there, there is the, the active THC, which is called the Delta-9. Uh, and then there is the inactive COOH, which is the THC metabolite. So THC after Delta-9, after being metabolized, becomes COOH. And some prosecutors, when they see the COOH, but no Delta-9 THC, just the COOH, the metabolite of the THC, will oftentimes try to prosecute uh, our clients. And, you know, we say, no, 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 no. You, you cannot do that because that is not the active, the psychoactive ingredient in THC. It's the metabolite. It's after the body processes it. It just, all that means is it's like finding footprints, right, on the ground. Uh, THC was here or a sign, right? THC was here, uh, but it's no longer here. It's It's been processed and now it's become a different chemical after the body has broken it down into its constituent parts. Uh, so uh, just incredible. You got a great question. Can they get a blood? Uh, can, can they get a warrant to draw your blood? Not in Kentucky. Kentucky is one of those uh, states that goes above Missouri versus McNeely. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard the exigent circumstances case, but um uh, we have a case called Combs v. Commonwealth. Uh, I don't remember the site off the top of my head, but that's the that's the case. And Combs says, unless there is death or serious physical injury, you cannot get a warrant for the blood, period, in Kentucky. I mean, it is literally a, a haven for refusals here in Kentucky. Absolute haven. Uh, once you say no, that's it. Now, some of you who are down south, our neighbors uh, from Tennessee have probably heard about your no refusal weekends. I'm, I'm well aware, I'm well familiar with uh, no refusal weekends. We don't have those. Those would be illegal. I even won a case because uh, my client was forcibly detained and they forcibly extracted blood from him and we had the video of that. Scary shit, scary, scary stuff. Uh, but we won, you know, and, and it was it was a dead loser case. But for that fact, um, so that is um, that is Kentucky for you. Kentucky has not uh, Kentucky does not allow warrants for blood for blood uh, uh, extraction unless you are. You have been involved in an accident, basically, and somebody died or you severely hurt somebody. Serious physical injury. Again, what is the definition? Is it a broken bone? Is it, um, you know, it wouldn't be like a bruise on the head. That's not serious. Something serious, like a broken bone, 
maybe um, internal bleeding, something like that, where it would be, uh, I don't think we have very much case law on that issue. But uh, the great question, by the way, great question. So uh, in Kentucky, if you say no after the officer says, uh, are you going to submit to my blood draw? Now, some of them are getting crafty, I've noticed. Some of them are getting a little um, creative in the way that they deal with my clients. I mean, they're, they're devious, bloody snakes. And what they say is something along the lines of, well, if you submit to my blood draw, you're going to get out of here early versus if you don't submit to my blood draw, well, you're going to be here a while or something like of that nature, right? And I mean, is that a constitutional violation? Not really, unfortunately. That's um, they, They're lying sacks of shit and they're, they're telling my client to do something that it that he or she doesn't want to do and they're finding a way to extract it out of them lawfully by deception and deception is not illegal in the united states of america when it comes to law enforcement great britain is a whole different story great britain if a police officer or a bobby as they're called over there if a bobby uh, lies to you and gets a any type of confession or evidence against you uh, as I understand it, it's not admissible in court because it was obtained by deceptive means. No, Joey, that entrapment is a totally different legal concept, and we're we're not going to be talking about entrapment today. But it, it, that's not entrapment. Entrapment is a very very specific. Uh, it's basically basically an affirmative action by a police officer to get you to do an act which you normally wouldn't do but for the coercion of the police officer it's it's not a you come up to them and say hey i would like to sell you some drugs and they go wait a second i'm a cop and they go oh entrapment no uh, i'm i was just kidding you're entrapping me or something like that it's the officer actually going out and saying look will you buy my drugs no, I, I I don't have any drugs, man. Like, come on, man. It's just you know, go ahead and sell me some drugs. It, it's got a it's it's a very very specific set of facts. But um, I I can't even provide a good example. I, I don't know, do these types of cases. I was trying to remember from law school, but uh, it's not coming to me. Uh, we'll we'll probably. Well, I guess we could cover that topic at one point or another. I'm actually going to write it down. I think entrapment is a fun topic. I, I know very little about it, honestly, for the most part. We don't we don't really deal with it. Um, where's my list? Topics. Here we go. Talk about entrapment and how it works and how is it different from. Well, let's just go with, with the first portion. So people. Oftentimes, um, confused with it. They think anytime a police officer is lying to you, that's entrapment. That's not true. That's not true. There we go. That's that was the phrase. So how is how is that different from? How is it different from good old fashioned plain lying by the cop? Right. So that's that's a great topic. Thanks for that. DUI checkpoint also is not entrapment because the Supreme Court has ruled that they essentially are, you're, you're put on notice. It has its own uh, four criteria that must be met, Kim. And if those criteria are met, you're, you're good. Because one, one of the criteria is your ability to actually turn around if you see a checkpoint. You're not obligated to go through them. Now, of course, we all know if there's a line of cars and an officer is going to see one car you know, turning tail and turning around, what are they going to do? They're going to they're fucking follow it, right? Uh, so you're not getting away that easily. But the United States Supreme Court said that's okay. But again, they can't pull you over just because you turned away from a, uh, a DUI checkpoint. That's still not enough. So even if you turn tail and run, uh, you know, drive away from that checkpoint, they get into the cruiser and they follow you and you don't commit a single traffic law violation, good luck with that. But you don't commit a single traffic law violation. You get home and the officer's got nothing. I mean, you, 
you just got away. The only problem is if you truly are under the influence, I mean, if, even if you're not, even if you're sober as a judge, you're still going to screw up somewhere. You're not going to turn your, your, your blinker on or you're going to maybe your one of your lights is out. I mean, there's always something they will find if they follow you around, um, uh, follow you around long enough, they will find a violation. I mean, that's just the way it works. Uh, it, uh, it's impossible. It's impossible for you to drive so squeaky clean that we're to the point where you're, you know, you're not going to be able to get pulled over. They'll make shit up if they have to. If it takes, if it takes them too long and they get bored, they'll just find stuff. So going back to our topic, uh, again, drug versus alcohol DUIs. We're talking about marijuana. Uh, so be careful. Be careful when you are absolutely certain that you have never submitted to a uh, I'm sorry that you that you submit to a drug test if you do a, a blood test that's going to show drugs and you think well I'm squeaky clean I don't have any drugs in my system I haven't I haven't smoked anything you know today I oh shit I smoked three two days ago right it, it could potentially be in your system and now it's too late so uh, and you'd be prosecuted and, and potentially convicted with uh, unless you have good legal advice because the prosecutor is just going to see that number and that's that's going to be the word of god for the prosecutor that's going to be enough uh what about prescription meds for 18 years kathy are you talking about 18 year olds or i'm not 100 percent sure what the question is um and yeah so be absolutely refuse uh except in about 12 states uh, I know Nebraska being one of them. If Bell Island is watching this, hey, Bell. Uh, he's a, a lawyer out of Nebraska. Very, very good guy. Also a member of the National College for DUI Defense. And he um, he told me, you know, if you're in Nebraska, do not refuse. Blow, 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 blow. And I'm like, you know, you're speaking a foreign language to me right now, buddy. Because, uh, it, well, for them, uh, if you are operating a motor vehicle under the influence, they're charged with operating a motor vehicle under the influence, and you refuse, they have a separate criminal statute that they charge you with as soon as you refuse. So even if you beat the DUI, you then have to beat the refusal. This is how I understand uh, Nebraska's DUI law. And that, to me, I mean, that's just a whoo! Uh, I, I guess blowing is, is the only way uh, to win there. Like, you actually have to attack the machine. They're kind of like... Um, uh, was it Virginia or West Virginia where uh, basically the only way to beat a DUI is you, you can't take DUIs to trial. There are no jury trials for any offense that is less than six months in jail. And a DUI first offense is less than six. I think second as well is less than six months in, in jail. So you can get a jury. So you either plead guilty or attack the machine. If you beat that number, you pretty much won. And if you can't get rid of that number, you pretty much lost. So uh, a lot of states are are like that. Some states are like that, but they're they're different. Um, uh, an ignition interlock device, by the way, Kathy. Great point you bring up. I was just about to get to that, so uh, thank you for reminding me. the The way an ignition interlock device works. So. First and foremost, alcohol and drug DUIs. Uh, can you install an ignition interlock device if you had a drug DUI? The law in Kentucky says yes. Although it makes no sense, right? What is an ignition interlock device? An ignition interlock device is something you install on your vehicle that allows you to start the vehicle so long as you blow and register below a certain threshold, usually 0.02. So if you blow zeros, right, uh, it, you start the car. You blow above 0 0.02, 0 0.02 or above, you can't start the car, right? Easy. Well, the law does not discriminate from allowing individuals who have been charged with a drug DUI. Let's go back to our Xanax example. Let's say you are being charged with uh, taking Xanax and operating a motor vehicle under the influence of Xanax, and you don't have a prescription for Xanax. 
Well, you can petition the court for an ignition interlock device, and that petition should be granted. Well, that makes no sense, does it? Because you can still take a Xanax, you can take 100 Xanax and get behind the wheel of that car, blow into the breathalyzer, blow zeros, and off you go, uh, probably to your first victim, right? But that's just the way the law works. Some judges, I have found that some judges, some judges will deny petitions where it's a marijuana or drug DUI for ignition in a lock devices. And a, a, you're absolutely right, Hillbilly Caucus. Uh, ignition in a lock devices are a revenue for the state. Uh, they, even though it's businesses or private businesses, of course, are the ones where you go to actually install the device uh, and get the, the permission to do so, it all goes through the government, of course. So it's, for them, it's a win-win. The only person who, and technically for you as well, because whereas before you would just be suspended and you couldn't drive, now you can at least drive, which is kind of nice. So you kind of, it's almost... You're buying your way into driving. It's, it, this, this country is very capitalistic, isn't it? You, you're paying money because you were arrested on a suspicion of a DUI where you refused a breathalyzer, let's say, or blood. And now you are permitted to get behind the wheel so long as you install this funky little device in your car and pay us, you know, installation fee, um, application fee, installation fee, and a monthly fee. So you're kind of like literally buying your driving privileges. Uh, back. It's kind of sad, but uh, it's it's real, and at least it allows you to drive. You know, I I guess I look at it that way. Um. So I don't know if that answers your your question, Kathy. I mean, yes, they, they depending on on your budget. I understand how they can be expensive. Uh, you can opt in for. On the application, there's a, a box you can check in Kentucky. I don't know other states. Uh, if you're indigent, uh, you're represented by the public defender, then you're going to be able to um, get it at low cost or no cost. I think one out of five applicants, they allow uh, to get the device for, for a very modest cost. But yeah, the, the application fee is like $100. Uh, it's $100. Then the installation fee is like 70 I think, and then it's a monthly fee of $55 a month. So uh, I think that's – how's it going, Perceptions Music? Uh, that's it, – it can get pretty expensive, again, depending on your budget. So um, there, there might be – oh, you're in Oregon. Okay, no indigent prices there. Well, so it is. Um, that's pretty much all I had to say that was on my agenda for drug versus alcohol DUIs. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of interaction between drug and alcohol in the sense that you can be prosecuted. Uh, by the way, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notification bell if you're new here. You can uh, know anytime I go live or post new videos, which hopefully we'll have some soon. Uh, very excited to get back into the courtroom. You guys have no idea. Uh, it's been too long. So you can be prosecuted for uh, a good, good old-fashioned run-of-the-mill DUI, uh, alcohol DUI. Uh, you can be charged with uh, one where if they just have – Subjective suspicions uh, is the what operating while under the influence. Uh, being under the influence of any substance or combination of substances, uh, we covered those drugs at the bottom of the list. Uh, excuse me, the list of drugs at the bottom of the statute. Then being in combination of alcohol and another drug, so you could have you know two drugs and then. Whereas by themselves, under prescription, they would be fine in your system, but combined, they create an under-the-influence effect. Or alcohol plus drug, where by themselves would be fine in, in the quantity ingested, but together 
when they come together in the system, they create a a much more inebriative effect. Let's say if they're both CNS, central nervous system depressants, for example. Uh, and then, of course, the the kitty DUI, as we like to call it, kitty DUI. It's the under 21.02 uh, DUI. So if you blow 0.02 or greater, uh, this is just for alcohol, then you uh, can be charged with and convicted of a DUI under the age of 21. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to open up the floor to questions. And um, I know F. Lotog had one. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so I don't. I think it's already gone. Uh, so yeah, F. Lotog, if you're still here, feel free, brother. Again, thanks for uh, subscribing as a member or joining. Joining. I got to be careful. To use proper nomenclature. Uh, subscribing, obviously, and then joining. Thank you for joining as a member. How long have I been an attorney? Uh, this is my eighth year. Texas DUI for weed. What do? I, I love that. It's very, <laughs> it's a very um, caveman question to ask, Alex Bouvier. Texas DUI for weed. What do? Um, well, Alex. You do. Call. Hard name. Mimi. Coffee. Spelled similar, but not exactly the same mimi coffee let me get your number uh mimi uh c-o-f-f-e-y mimi m-i-m-i -M -I. she is in texas she is uh the best she is the absolute best in texas Even Benadryl can get you a DUI if, in their opinion, you're impaired. I believe it, Kathy. I absolutely believe it. Are there any members of this channel that are part of the DUI guys' legal team? I don't think so. Is court in session in Louisville? Yes. No, it's, it's in session for the most part. I mean, we had some court appearances canceled last week, but... Um, this past week, but no, we're still mostly open. Uh, 7.38 timestamp. Let's see. I'm not going to read your name out loud. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, less than six months, no jury trial. What what if they have seven charges with a hundred you're talking about the um, you're talking about the uh, right to a jury trial. If it's less than six months, there is no jury trial, yes. Uh in some states, not Kentucky. Here, I think uh, 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 pretty much any you can try a speeding ticket if you want. Uh what if you have seven charges with a hundred and fifty days maximum sentence each? Would that qualify for a jury trial? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, if they could run concurrent only, probably not. Uh, if they could run consecutive, probably yes. I don't practice in those states, so I, I don't have a good answer. Doodly do, welcome. Welcome to Law Novice, brother. Welcome to the club. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, everyone come to Canada. <laughs> Cannabis is legal here. Yeah, I have some family in Canada. I can probably go visit, but I, I'm not a huge fan of of the green leaves, the ganja. Just not my thing. Mm, let's see. Worst state to get a DUI in? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Do they have PBA cards in Kentucky? What is a PBA card, A Kane? Does Benadryl have alcohol? I don't, I don't even think that. I don't think Benadryl has alcohol. Benadryl just makes you sleepy. What is a PBA card? 
Am I missing something here? Uh, I don't know Nevada, Dennis. How can you tell if a attorney is lie? James is coming out with all the, the zingers tonight. How can you tell if a attorney is lie? You know is lie if attorney mouth move. Uh, a serious question I have been wanting to ask you in one of your videos. You refereed, referred to the bad video quality as a potato. Please explain. <laughs> uh, it's it's an old joke. It's a it's an internet meme joke. If you are if you are recording something and it's really poor quality, it's like it's being recorded with a potato. Like it's just a joke. Uh, what is the max for DUI? You mean like a sentence, hillbilly? In Kentucky, on a first 30 days, on a second, six months, on a third, a year, and on a fourth, max is five years. Every state's different. A cane. Oh, thanks for the $5 dono. Oh, here we go. A PBA card is a card that a cop gives to family, friends, especially saying, don't ticket this person. Oh, well, okay. Listen, you're <laughs> you're going in a whole different. This is politics. I I, I don't do politics, brother. I, I do the law. These things exist. They're outside my purview. I'm sure they do on some level somewhere, and in, in Kentucky too, probably. Any difference in an edible versus smoking? Does it matter, Kim? That's a good question. Uh, THC is THC is THC. If it's in your system, it's in your system. If it's affecting you, it's affecting you. Uh, even if it's not, it, if it's in your system, you could be prosecuted. That's the problem. You can get a trial for jaywalking here in Georgia. I believe it. I mean, pretty much same here. Just incredible. Just we don't we don't ticket anybody for jaywalking. The our lightest tickets here are probably just speeding. Kentucky is oh, I just lost it. Where'd it go? Kentucky is an implied consent state. Yes, Justin. Every every state in the union is an implied consent state at this point. DUI for drinking green tea. <laughs> Okay, hey Sasha, he's a uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, we we just ordered a bunch of uh, teas from this website called uh, EnjoyingTea.com. You're welcome for the free plug, by the way. Uh, EnjoyingTea.com. They have it's just amazing selection of teas, and they'll just ship it right to you. It's pretty cool. Um, where's my endorsement? Or not endorsement? What was it called? Um, sponsorship, right? <laughs> <laughs> DUI for drinking green tea. That's hilarious. Implied consent is the you impliedly consent to a, a test of your breath, blood, or urine if you are suspected to be operating a motor vehicle under the influence. If you have enough money, you can usually get out of any DUI. <laughs> I guess that's true. Do you blow in the breathalyzer or no? 38 states or so you do, Ali, and 12 you don't. Jesus Christ, stop spamming. Why can cops lie but we can't? That's a great question. Just the way it is. And by the way, no, you, I mean, you're, there's no law that says you can't lie to the police officer. So wait a second, that statement is not true. Cops can lie, but we can't. That's not true. Cops can lie, and so can we.
Hi, Ellie's friends. <laughs> That's cool. Which uh, which college are you all watching from, Allie? If you'll get arrested if you don't blow Pepperdine. Oh, Malibu, right on. Oh, that's pretty cool. You guys are on the other side of the globe for me. Uh, I'm in Kentucky here. Pepperdine. I was in Malibu in, uh, what was it, July or August? I was in, in Malibu in August. Um, we were doing a photo shoot on the beach. The water was freezing, freezing. Oh, my goodness. It, it took us a while to get acclimated to the water, but it was great. Yeah, we we did the the scenic tour, you know, like that that long that long road. Oh my god, the traffic was horrible, but that, I mean that's California uh, for you. I it, yeah, no, that, I love that place. I love Cali. Uh, I go there all the time. <laughs> my friends are clapping. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, do you think uh, I'm trying to stay away from politics? We're not talking politics here, boys and girls. Does anybody else have any questions about drug and alcohol? Nobody ever asks questions on topic. Everybody has 100 questions that are completely unrelated. And I, I will come back, Allie. I'll come back. I think I, I said it on my last stream. I don't know, Allie, if you were here or not, but I had... Um, an individual call me from California and they have a currently pending DUI. And I told them, you know, look, I, I can't help you. I'm not licensed in California, but they were insistent. They just wanted to pick my brain. And I said, look, no legal advice. I can just give you my own personal opinion. And uh, that was the first time anyone has ever paid me money out of state to give my own personal opinion, which was really freaking cool. Um, and completely legal too, because it's not legal advice. I told him I can't, I'm not licensed in California. So <laughs> I hope, I hope I never hear from you in that capacity, but I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, oh yes, that was the question. Just incredible. There you go. Uh, can you get a DUI on a bicycle? The answer is yes. Just not a motorized, it's not a motorized vehicle. It's a, it's a muscle powered uh, device, of course. So it's a different statute that applies, but yes, you can still get a DUI on a bicycle. Actually, in my, my earlier days when I was still with my former partner, um, we represented an individual who was arrested for a DUI on a bike and we ended up getting an acquittal. And he also ran into a cop, not a car, but a, a, a corrections officer, this was downtown, a corrections officer was crossing the street and the idiot was going the opposite, the, the wrong way down a one-way street on a bicycle. I mean, everybody does it, right? And the, the officer, um, he knocked her to the ground and, and a bunch of corrections officers like stormed out and just tackled into the ground. It was really bad. Uh, somebody got a DUI on a horse. Not that long ago. When was that one? Mm -hmm. Talk about muscle power, right? Ultimate muscle power. 2012. I thought it was more recent. I thought it was more recent. Maybe this is the older article. I, th I think there were two. Now, driving the, the horse and buggy, yeah, we that was uh, that was last year. That was in July. There was another Kentucky man. Yeah, no, no, that's that's the same one. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm uh, getting something mixed. I think it was in Hardin County too. In Hardin County, somebody was riding a horse. Uh, can you get a DUI on, on a wheelchair? I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, you can get a DUI anywhere. The statute reads anywhere in this state. So you can be in your own driveway. You can be in your own backyard. You can be anywhere. 
Uh, does legally carrying a weapon impact the DUI charge? Mm, usually not. I mean, sometimes the officer will confiscate it just because they can uh, and then return it when litigation is over. I don't know. Sometimes they do that. Um, but as long as it's carried legally, I don't, I don't see how it would impact, no. <laughs> Everybody's asking me if I'm licensed in their home state. No, I'm not licensed in Missouri. I'm only licensed in Kentucky, but I also pro-hack Vichy into Indiana. So I do Kentucky and Indiana. If you don't blow, are you automatically arrested and automatically ask for a lawyer? So we got two questions there, Allie. Um, yes, Mary Ari Jones said the right thing. You shut your mouth. Uh, if you don't blow, you pretty much will automatically be arrested. I mean, the officer may be nice and kind of let you go, unlikely, but possible, uh, especially if you kind of can hold your own in, in some states officers may be a little bit more liberal on the liberal liberal side. Um, but in, in Kentucky, I could never see that happening. And of course, yes, ask for your lawyer. Uh, you probably won't be even given the opportunity to call them until you actually get to the station and get processed and all that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, Allie, you're, you're too sweet. I, I appreciate it. We were, when I was in, in LA, I remember I said uh, I was in Malibu. We were just visiting Malibu. What part of L.A. Were, were we in? We were North L.A. God, what was the, the name of that city? My goodness, my, my brain is, is hurting trying to remember it. Not a oh, bloody hell. What was the name of that neighborhood? Not Burbank. Glendale. We were south of Glendale. That's where we were staying. We were south of Glendale. James Swilly, God love you, man. You are literally... You are... Uh, let's see. In Georgia, it's an automatic DUI when you refuse a breathalyzer. I believe it. I mean, Kentucky's almost the same, I guess. You're still going to be charged with a DUI. <laughs> James Swilly, how much does cost you to someone attorney? Many, many silver coins. Uh, if you are under prosecution for a drug DUI, I believe it's possible on the federal level, maybe state is the same. Uh, I don't do a lot of federal work, but yes, probably. Especially if you're on federal property. There might be something else. Uh, but yeah, on federal property, you'll be charged with, with a federal... You, well, no, that's not true. You'll be charged with a state crime in a federal court... But I'm not sure what you're referring to. Again, I don't. I do some state work, but not, not a lot. I've never visited Australia, Matthew, and I look forward to going there one day. Absolutely. I can I get a DUI off easily. Um, I I don't know your definition of easily, but. I am damn good at my job, I suppose. <laughs> Nobody's asking questions on topic anymore. It's impossible. They just want to ask their own questions. Oh, my God. We're going to go another six minutes, and then we're going we're gonna to call it quits. It's been an hour 24. I'll go an hour 30. Just for you guys. Just because I love you. Can you get a DUI for commenting like... <laughs> I'm sorry, James. I've been picking on you so much. God love you, man. I'm so sorry. 
Please don't go. Uh, I know, James. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. I'm literally about to cry. Uh... Thank you for being a good sport, James. I seriously love you. Um, can you can you get a DUI for talking like James? I mean, if I was a cop, probably. <laughs> okay, that's just creepy, doodly do. He wants me to set up a camera so you guys can watch me sleep. Pepperdine University. Okay. I'm going to remember this, Allie. That's really, really cool. Thank you guys for joining us live. I mean, we're live every Saturday, uh, Saturday at 6.30. So your time, uh, 3.30 p.m. every Saturday. Uh, under 18 USC 922G, persons who are unlawfully users or addicted to narcotics or any other controlled substance. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that, that's that's a whole different avenue watching you daily, but I see what you're getting at. I see what you're getting at. Right, no, it's, it's 5.03 now. It's 5.03, it's 8.03 here. I'm saying I went live at 6.30, which is 3.30 your time on, on the West Coast. I don't drink, Kim. Did, did you seriously forget? I've I will be uh, sober two years uh, in like six weeks. Is my my two year anniversary December twelfth? I don't I don't drink alcohol. I'll I'll drink some soda with you guys. I'm happy to do that. Did that Tesla vehicle, that autopilot into the truck get a DUI? <laughs> Good question, yo, bro. No, I don't know. Probably not. Thanks, James. I, I really appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Zachary. Did I get a DUI? No, I think that would be all over the news. I think if you Google my name, that would probably like be the first thing anybody would see. It would be scary as shit. Thanks, Doodly. But talk about a a, a self promotion, right? Go out there and get the DUI guy gets a DUI. The DUI guy gets himself off a DUI after getting a DUI. Now that's a fucking headline. But no. Any publicity is great publicity, right? <laughs> no. Oh, congrats, Diana. October 5th was your fifth year anniversary of not drinking. Very impressive. Congratulations, Diana. Uh, remember the judge that was drug out of her courtroom for a DUI probation violation? Are you talking about the judge that was convicted of a DUI or? Mm, I, I don't think I do. It's expensive, Kyle. All right, so we're coming up at the, the mark that I was pretty much saying we're going to stop. Uh, I think Chad is getting tired. How do you become an honorary lawyer, Richard? Let me give you the link. Or Wait a second. Is it the link? I don't remember how to... I don't remember how to get the link up here, to be honest. Memberships... 
uh, invite. I think there's an invite button. Uh, oh, I can add another emoji now. Right, we're at 10 members. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Um, how do you how do you link this? Here we go. Membership links. Invite viewers to join your channel. Here we go. This is the link, Richard. This is the link. Uh, if you do it in the next couple of minutes, it will show up here live. But no pressure. This is I'm just telling you. Uh, we'll be able to see it at the top. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. There's the emojis. You can see the eyebrows a little bit on those emojis, but I, I don't like the fact that they're so... Hey, LMAO, welcome to the Law Novice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> you said no pressure, but I felt the pressure. <laughs> oh, you're good, man. Um, yeah, thanks you. Thank you all for joining. Um, I know I, I, I loved saying it. I loved saying it, Doodly. Thanks, James. So are you, brother. How do you become an honorary lawyer? Hit this link, Richard, right here. <clears throat> After you, you click the link, it will, uh, everyone, uh, uh DY guys, back. Uh, shut up me. Um, you, um, you can choose law novice or you can choose honorary lawyer and, uh, hit join after you hit honorary lawyer, and then you'll be able to join as an honorary lawyer on this channel. And here we go. Oh, we got another one. Zachary Ruthier. Welcome brother. <laughs> Saying shut up to yourself is a power move. Maybe. Uh, don't show the sovereign citizens. I, I talk about sovereign citizens. Um, yes, it, it, it is it is a pay to play. Like I said, uh, subscribing doesn't cost anything. So if you're already a subscriber, James, once you hit that button, you're subscribed and it's free. The joining as a member earns you perks, uh, member only memes, which I'm sharing. Uh, and if you are in... Uh, and obviously emojis and badges as as you can see Zachary Ruthier just sh uh, shared them uh, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> there you go so you get a chance to see a, uh, to have a little badge next to your name your name appears in green when you're in chat uh, and I think it also appears in green on the when you when you comment on some videos on any video you can use emojis. Uh, right now I have six and I can add another one. So we'll have seven uh, pretty soon here. I think I'll be able to get it all the way up to 10. And then, <laughs> thanks, Deb. You're so sweet. Uh, and then if you are an honorary lawyer, that's the, so there, there are two tiers. There's the law novice that includes everything I just said. And if you want to do the honorary lawyer, when um, things start picking up, again uh and even before they do you'll you guys will get a sneak peek uh, or sneak peeks plural into my life as a lawyer as a person um i'll be uploading those probably shortly i mean we're getting we're getting a few of these uh members signed on as honorary lawyers so i just want to make sure that people are getting the full bang for their buck otherwise it's it's not fair you know uh, i want you guys to get the full benefit of your of what you're paying for so since you guys are doing it i really never expected people to to join like i said pleasantly surprised that so many people are actually going for that one um i i think it's fun i think it's just it's really fun it's fun for me to do this it's fun for me to teach it's fun for me to interact with you guys today has been a, a wonderful day i mean the, you guys <laughs> you guys are killing me today so anyway um I hope that helps, um, Richard. Uh, I hope that helps if you were able to find the button. I don't know. I didn't see any more comments from you. But regardless, um, if you do decide to join, welcome. If not, that's cool too. Uh, I, <laughs> I am not giving them a free endorsement, Doodly. 
uh, that company is way too big to, to need any more endorsements. That's why I took the sticker off. Uh, man, this, this looks totally different in color than they look almost exactly the same. These are completely different colors. That's crazy. Uh, thank you all for joining. I have been enjoying today. I, it's been great. Uh, Kathy, hey, another one. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining, Kathy. Uh, thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure once again talking to you all. We're talking about drug and alcohol DUIs. Uh, next week, next week is going to be another great topic. I know everybody's waiting for for the following week, the 21st of November, two weeks from today. But next week's topic uh, is, it literally is going to be all, all for shits and giggles. Uh, how YouTube user JJE, and I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he, I hope he has seen uh, the fact that I'm calling him out uh, doing my first interaction in a sense. I mean, I've done some interactions with other users before, but this is going to be like, uh, I think he trolled. Uh, I was asking for topics. Uh, he, he was asking for, for topics. I was asking for topics and he was like, uh, um, Hey, how can I borrow $10? And I was like, you know what? I'm game. Let's spend an hour and a half talking about how a user JJE can borrow $10. And I'm going to be taking a lot of input from, uh, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate you too. Uh, I'm going to be taking a lot of input from people because, you know, that's a topic that I think literally should take five minutes, but we're going to have to drag it out and figure out how to make it last um, an entire hour at least. But I think I can. I'm, I'm, I'm an attorney. I'll, I'll be able to, to do that. Joey Fouts, you, you guys are... are Wow. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, trolling a troll. Yeah, exactly, Dev. You got it. You're on the money. Sergeant Frank Rock, uh, thank you for the $5 dono. You have a question. Uh, the one prosecutor was objecting every five minutes and the jury was laughing at him. Um, he's a private attorney. He practices down in, in Grayson. I mean, I, I don't know if he learned or not, but... Uh, He's a good dude. You know, he, he just, he was making some mistakes when he was litigating the trial. No big deal. Uh, I hope he learned. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's a great question. Perception music. Uh, same time. Always the same time. 6.30 p.m. Shits and giggles stream. Uh, how can user, YouTube user JJE borrow $10? We're going to be talking about that next Saturday. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 5.30 Central, 4.30 Mountain, 3.30 uh, Pacific. So same time, same channel. Thank you, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed today. I had so much fun. Uh, can we have prizes for the best trolling a troll comment? Sure. Why not? Uh, maybe we'll, we'll figure it out. So thank you all new members. I mean, good grief. I think we, when I came in, we had maybe like eight and now we're at like 14. We got like six members on live stream. This is so cool. Uh, we're growing. We're, we're a growing family. This is, this is fantastic. Thank you all. You guys, you, you don't know how much this means to me. Um, uh, it's been one of my most fun streams I think I've ever done. Uh, it, it's just, I think it's the people. I mean, it's you guys. It, it's the input I get from you all. So I, I appreciate all of it. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Hope you learned something. And it, even if you didn't, I hope you had some fun. So uh, have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And until then, stay safe, stay hydrated, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Peace out.